Hello everyone, on this video I'm going to go through a breakdown of how I created this milk box animation. The tools I use are Cinema 4D, After Effects, Photoshop and Illustrator and I'll be going through the overall process and showing you my workflow and how I mix them. Starting with Cinema 4D, I model a box out of a simple cube. I smooth the edges with a bevel deformer and a subdivision surface. To add the label to the box, I unwrapped it using UV edits. The best way I found to do this step is selecting all the polygons and projecting them as a box. It's a good start, but it needs some adjustments before adding any design. I select all the polygons and scale it down just a tiny bit to separate the UVs from the edges. I noticed when projecting the design that parts of the box were getting the form, and a way to fix this is selecting only those polygons and scaling them vertically. What I'm doing next is creating an empty material that later will be the canvas for the box label. A resolution of 2000 pixels per 2000 pixels will work just fine in this case. Now my UVs have a white background layer and what I need is a reference of the UVs so I can place the design on the right spot. Once this is done, I can save this as a PSD file, and the great thing about this is that the PSD preserves the layers that we are creating now. Before going to Photoshop, I jump really quick to Illustrator, and I redraw the design of this cool Japanese milk I found on Pinterest. I keep the background in a separate layer to stretch it as needed, while the typography and illustrations are on another one. Now in Photoshop, I simply place the design from Illustrator and match them to my UVs reference. Because this is a cartoon, I don't create the entire label, there is no need for that, and I only use the front and one of the sides and duplicate those around the box. Back on Cinema, I load this PSD file to my Luminance channel and apply it to the box. A quick tip here is that if you want a better preview on the viewport of the material, you can go to Editor and change the preview size to no scaling. Now it's time to break down the motion, my favorite part of the process. On the graph editor you can see the blocking I did for this box, and once I'm happy with the position I use the motion between the frames. I start with the y-axis, and then add the scale parameter, and finally the rotation. Now I like how the jump is looking, but I would like to accentuate it even more, so I add a twist and a bulge deformer. Moving on, I add a parallel camera to the scene. I do it this way because the classic perspective camera tends to deform the final image. For this scene, I used only one infinite light. I used the luminance channel because there are no gradients as compared with a diffuse material. So the way I add them is with a cell shader on a layer over the label design. I change this layer to multiply and bring it down to 40% opacity. The camera is animated on three parameters, the vertical axis, tilt up and down, and with a zoom.
To get the glow coming out of the box, I use Sketch and Tune, but I make sure to turn everything off from the render settings. I only keep the resolution independent option, because this will always render these lines based on a custom resolution. To add the glow, I create a sketch material, then change the color, thickness and 2D transform parameters. I keyframe everything so it resembles an expansion wave. Once the material is done, I duplicate them and move them a couple of frames forward on the timeline. This will create a small delay in between materials, giving this ripple effect. Because I didn't want to have only one box in the scene, I use a simple cloner to get the other boxes. I do want them to move, but not to jump as the main box, so I delete those keyframes and add some bounce when the main box hits the disc. I animated only one and then overlapped those keyframes onto the other boxes. To add this gradient ripple to the discs, I create a gradient shader over the cell I already have and keyframe the position of the knobs, so the white glow expands over time. Once all is done, I export the PNG sequence and it's ready for the final touches. Now in After Effects, I import the PNG sequence and add some saturation and push the levels for more contrast. I add these lines we could call fireworks to exaggerate even more the motion of the box. The way I do them is drawing a simple path, add a trim path and zigzag to some of them to break the straightness of those lines. I duplicate and rotate the comp to get the same lines on the other side of the box and finally I add sparks at the end of the fireworks with this same trim path technique. Okay, that's all for now guys. I hope you find this breakdown useful and let me know if you enjoyed it. I'll be posting more tutorials to this channel, so I'll see you soon. Bye!